Hello and welcome to another video. This is another limit problem but this time it involves trigonometry and there's just something you want to look out for every time you get a limit problem with trigonometric functions. You want to look for the sine function and the cosine function. Now right here I do not see a cosine function, I mean a cosine function, I see a tangent function. There's not really much you can do and the first recommendation is to rewrite every tangent expression as a ratio of sine to cosine and then you start looking for how to um, use some limit identities, okay? Let me just write both of them because those two are usually common and you want to know them. Make sure you know them, okay? So the first one is this, that the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta will always be one. You see this expression here? You need to understand that. You will see that. Now, the good thing about this theta is it just doesn't have to be theta. Whatever the argument of the sine function is, if that's the denominator, for example, if someone told you that it is sine 21k over 21k, well, that limit, as far as this is going to zero, let's say k, is going to zero, you'll also get one. So as long as what's here is here, what's here is what's here, and this is going to zero, this is gonna to go to zero, this is gonna to go to zero, then you're gonna have this limit to be one. So that's one tool you wanna keep on your mind. Now the second tool is another identity, which will, or I call it a limit identity, which will be that the limit also as theta goes to zero, of cosine theta minus one over theta, you'll always get zero. Well, this can also be reversed. It becomes one minus cosine theta over theta. You'll also get it to be zero. So whether it's like this or like this, that's the limit as theta goes to zero. So this or this will always give you zero and this will always give you one. So when you have trig, um, limits like this, you want to try and remember these two and look for opportunities in the problem to plug in these limits, okay, especially when you get zero, zero, or it makes their function undefined, okay. So having understood these two things that we're going to need, we're going to need this identity, we're going to need this identity. Um, I've already done this problem. I know we're not going to use this for some reasons which I'm going to explain. So let's get into the video. Okay, so I boxed this so you can remember because that's the only identity we'll be using in this video. Now, the second identity will be cosine theta minus one over theta, the limit will be go to zero, but there's no negative sign here. And by the time we work this out, we will not be getting any, anything squared, so we will not need to do any substitution, okay? So remember this, in another video, I'm gonna show you how to use the other identity, but this is key for this one. Now, the next thing you want to do is rewrite this tangent portion as a ratio of sine to cosine. That's the first thing. Okay, so we're going to have the limit as theta goes to zero of sine three theta over theta plus, now I'm going to write this as sine eight theta over cosine eight theta. Okay, you shouldn't have a fraction under a fraction. So you wanna get rid of any fraction under a fraction. So we're going to, in order to get rid of this fraction, this cosine under here, I'm going to multiply the bottom by cosine eight theta and multiply the top by the same thing, cosine eight theta. That's always a good strategy. So let me do that. Um, I'm going to multiply the entire denominator by cosine eight theta. That means I'm going to multiply the top also by cosine 8 theta. So we're multiplying, okay? This, this is a neat way to do your work. So this is going to be the limit as theta goes to 0 of sine 3 theta cosine 8 theta divided by this one. Multiply this, you get theta cosine 8 theta 
plus. Now this is going to cancel this out. You have just sine 8 theta remaining. Okay, now our work looks clean and we now start, we now need to start strategizing for this. So look at what I'm looking for. So for this problem, for cosine, zero is usually not a problem because the cosine of eight times zero is cosine zero, and that gives you one. So you won't be dealing with zeros, so you shouldn't worry, but the sine of zero will be zero, and that makes everything zero. So that's why we need to focus on this, and we need to focus on this also. Well, we need to focus on this too, because zero times this is gonna eliminate it, and plus zero, so we can't do direct substitution at this point, because we're gonna get zero over zero. So the next thing you wanna do is create these kinds of expressions in this fraction. So I'm going to divide this by three theta, okay? And I'm gonna divide this by eight theta. So in order to do that, divide the top by three theta, divide the bottom by three theta, but that by eight theta rather, so you can have that fraction. However, once you do that, you've changed the value, so you have to reverse it. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite this to be the limit as theta goes to zero of, I'm going to write sine. You know what? I'm going to write what I'm going to do here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide the top by three theta but I'm going to multiply it by three theta also. So do this, this is gonna help you. The same thing for the bottom, okay? It's gonna be eight theta over eight theta. So you take the part you want into this and then you'll be good. So we're multiplying the entire expression under, because there are two terms, that's why I'm using parentheses. Okay, so let's go in here. I'm going to bring this three theta straight under this. So it's gonna be sine three theta over 3 theta multiplied by cosine 8 theta. So I have used this denominator, but I still have the top part, which I'm going to leave out just to make your work clean. Leave it as 3 theta. Okay? All over. We go to the bottom. We're going to bring this 8 theta to divide this expression. So that's going to be theta cosine 8 theta, ah, don't forget that, cosine 8 theta over 8 theta plus sine 8 theta over 8 theta. But remember that this entire denominator is still being multiplied by 8 theta. So we brought in the denominator here, but we still have the top part um, on the outside. Okay, now let's do some simplification first before we go on. So I'm gonna say this is the limit as theta goes to zero of sine three theta over three theta plus, I mean multiplied by cosine eight theta multiplied by, you know what? I can cancel the two thetas here. So what I have on top will be just three. I'm multiplying by three and in the denominator, what I have is going to be this theta is going to take this theta out. What you have left will be cosine 8 theta over 8 theta. Sorry, over 8. The theta is gone. I forgot. Okay, over 8. And then you have plus. This is going to be sine 8 theta over 8 theta. But we're still multiplying by this 8. So you have the eight on the outside, multiplying everything that's under. Okay, now let's apply the laws of limits that tell us that, well, this is gonna be the same thing as the limit as sine three theta over three theta, as this limit as theta goes to zero, multiplied by the cosine, the limit, as theta goes to zero of cosine eight theta times the limit as theta goes to zero of three divided by the limit as cosine eight theta um, over eight as theta goes to zero plus 
This is interesting. Plus the limit as sine 8 theta over 8 theta, I mean of that, as theta goes to 0. Now all of this multiplied by the limit of theta, as, let's just write it, the limit <laughs> goes to 0 of 8. Mm, I'm going to squeeze in what I've got here. This limit is going to be 1. When theta is 0, 0 goes in here, this becomes 1 because cosine 0 is 1. And then the limit of a constant is still that constant. Okay? And then we're going to divide by... When you plug in 0 here, cosine 0 is 1. So 1 over 8 is what we have here. And here, this limit, because this and this are the same, will be 1. So plus 1. Everything multiplied by the limit of this, that's going to be 8. Well, this implies 1 times 1 times 3 gives you 3. And 1 plus 1 eighth will be 9 over 8. So that's going to be 9 over 8 multiplied by 8. Well, this 8 is going to take this 8 out. What you have left is going to be 3 over 9. And that gives you one third. So the limit of this expression of this function as theta goes to zero is one third. Remember, you could have used L'Hopital's rule for this. Just differentiate the top, differentiate the bottom. It's very quick. But at the beginning, usually, your instructor does not allow you to use L'Hopital's rule because you assume to not know it yet. So you're, you're supposed to go through all the algebraic and trig manipulations. And that's what we've done. So remember, remember, don't try to use any method that is not allowed yet until you learn it. And it's a good thing that you know these things because they'll help you as you go forward. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.